Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, yeah, today I'll be talking to you about translating Moodle with Moodle Academy. Uh, so my name is Richard Lefroy, and I'm the learning and media technologist with Moodle Academy. Um, specifically today, we're going to be looking at a course that we've released on Moodle Academy, all about translations, and we'll also be looking at um, the plugin uh, that was mentioned earlier, uh, newly developed plugin. So we'll be we'll have a look at that a little more in depth as well. <coughs> um, so just a quick quick rundown. We'll quickly uh, I'll quickly talk about our goal um, in creating accessible and inclusive content, and then we'll run you through the course and uh, run you through the plugin. Hopefully, we'll have a little bit of time for questions and comments and wrap-ups afterwards. So first off, if you were here for the presentation just before, you would have heard all about uh, Moodle Academy. One of our goals uh, of Moodle Academy has always been to make our courses and content inclusive and accessible to as many people as possible. And obviously, as part of that, we need to have our courses and content available in multiple languages. From its inception, Moodle Academy has invited the community to help us develop our courses and present online webinars. And now, with the launch of our Translate Moodle Academy course and our plugin, our community members are getting involved even further to make Moodle Academy as inclusive and accessible as it can be. So we'll have a quick look at our new course first. It launched uh, this year, the beginning of June 2022, and it launched uh, in conjunction with the translation plugin. Uh, as with all Moodle Academy courses, it's free and open for anyone to access and participate in. The ultimate goal of this course is to give those in our community who wish to help translate um, Moodle Academy content the background knowledge and the skills necessary to do so. So once a, a participant completes the course, they're given permissions on our Moodle Academy site to begin translating content. Uh, so the course covers some general background information about Moodle's multi-language functionality, um, some information on the, the plugin, which we'll look at shortly, some information on the Amos translation toolkit, which I'll talk a little bit about shortly. Uh, we have information on video transcript translation. Um, we've got a few tasks for participants to get hands on and put their knowledge into practice, and then a quiz at the end to test your understanding. Uh, so look, I won't go into too much detail on the specifics of the course, but I will just touch briefly on a couple of features which make it slightly different from our other courses. So, as I mentioned, in this course, we are upskilling members of our community to take on the role of translating content. So, yeah, there are a few tasks and, and requirements that we ask our learners to complete to demonstrate their competence in translating. Uh, we ask that anyone wanting to complete this course and become a translator is bilingual, which I don't know, makes sense. Um, so, they must be fluent in the language, obviously, that they are translating into. Um, and have at least level B2 English proficiency. So the very nature of this course means that not all members of the community uh, will be able to undertake all of the required tasks to complete the course. Obviously though, you know, anyone who's interested in this is very welcome to sign up and, and, um, and, and take part. Uh, video is a large part of the content that we develop for Moodle Academy, so translation of video transcripts is an important part of making all of our content in inclusive and accessible. One of the required tasks that we ask participants to complete is to translate a transcript of a video into their language and submit it to be reviewed by the Moodle Academy team. Uh, the video itself is just a short introduction from Martin for one of our other courses, Introduction to Moodle and participants will watch the video, download the English transcript, um, and then translate it, obviously, and submit it to be reviewed by us. Uh, we then run a, an automated check on the translation. Um, essentially, we're just sort of signing off, um, signing off on it, and once that's done and they've completed the rest of the tasks, um, participants are able to fully complete the course, and they'll then get the necessary permissions to begin translating. Um, so since the course launched, um, Anna touched on these stats very, very briefly. Um, since the course launched, we've had 35 
make that 36 participants, uh, representing 16 different languages, as you can see here. Fully complete the course, earn their badge, and they've gone on now, and they've got the translating role in the Academy site, and we've already seen you know, a number of, good number of people going in and actually begin translating our, our courses and our content, which is, which is great. All right, so that's the course itself. We'll now look at the, the plugin that was developed in conjunction with the course. Uh, so it was developed by uh, Andrew Hancock, who's in the audience today. Um, I promised I wouldn't point him out, but I'm going to anyway. Um, and yeah, it, it was specifically developed for the purposes of allowing the community to translate Moodle Academy um, content. Um, as I mentioned earlier, launched in June 2022 in conjunction with the course. As with all plugins, it is now open and available for anyone to install on their own Moodle sites, and you can find it on the Moodle plugins directory. I'll share just a few more details about exactly how to go, how to go and find it um, at the end of the session. Um, so the plugin, plugin enables users with appropriate permissions to provide inline translation of content in a Moodle site or course for text that's not translated by language packs. So I just want to expand briefly on that last point um, just before we jump in to see how it works. So as some of you may be aware, Moodle uses language packs to translate its interface into other languages. So I won't go into too much detail on language packs, but essentially this covers standard phrases and words which are included in Moodle core code. So things like menu items, uh, buttons, settings, basically all terminology that is included in a standard installation of Moodle. Um, these translations are handled centrally by a system called Amos using language packs and are then applied across all sites um, that, that have those language packs installed. So in contrast, the plugin, the translation plugin, um, is built to translate content which is not part of a standard installation of Moodle. So that is content which is created or added within an individual site. Uh, so translations therefore exist only in the context of that site. Uh, so just to de demonstrate here, um, as you can see, um, some of the elements of the Moodle user interface in this case, so on the, on the right here in this case, it's a um, drop down menu of settings or options. Um, so those translations have been provided by language pack and then we have some other content which has been translated within the site itself using the content translation plugin. So just diving in a little bit into how it actually works. Uh, once the user, uh, well, in the context of our Academy site, once the user passes our course, we then give them the permissions to use the plugin. So they can start by choosing their language from the, the language menu, and then they will have another option to start um, inline translations. Um, you can see here we've got a whole list of options, but in the language menu, start inline translations from the plugin menu. And once you essentially switch that on, you'll see something like this. So all translatable text on the page will have an icon displayed next to it to show its current status and allow it to be translated. There are three different icons which you know, essentially indicate the translation status for any piece of content. Uh, missing is for content which has not yet been translated. Uh, stale is when the translation is out of date. So this is going to occur, uh, occur when the original English language, in our case, um, content has been modified after a translation was provided. Uh, and then obviously translated is content which has been translated and is up to date. Um, as you can see in this example screenshot, none of this content has been translated yet, so the missing icon is displayed for each piece of translatable content. So clicking on any of those icons will allow you to add or update a translation. Uh, you can see on the left we have the original content as it was written in English. Uh, and on the right you can provide a translation into your own language. In this case, uh, Dutch is what we're looking at. Uh, so once saved, the translated content will be displayed on the page. You'll notice the translation icon indicating the status of the translation has changed. And at that point, the translation is now visible to all users viewing that content with that specific language set. Um, so you can see here that most of the content has been translated. 
as indicated by the translated icon. Um, and we still have one stale translation and one missing translation. As well as providing translations uh, on any page using inline tr uh, the inline translation option, we also have a view, or you can also view and manage translations for the current language um, across a page um, or across a, a course or across a whole site by choosing from um, the other options in the menu. So selecting one of these options will display a report of translate translatable content either across you know, a course or a site. Um, and you can then pro provide translations from here rather than having to visit individual pages and, and hit the uh, individual icons. Uh, as mentioned earlier, the plugin is open and available for anyone to install on their own Moodle sites, and you can find it in the Moodle plugins directory. Um, so it's actually a set of plugins. Um, you can search for content translations and translations to find them. Uh, and of course, there's further information available on the Moodle Docs pages. Good timing. <laughs> I didn't do my hair, though. Yeah. Um, as with everything, more information available on the Moodle Docs pages uh, by searching for content translation plugin set. Um, and that, I believe, is about all we have time for. I'm not sure how long we have for questions. Um, if we have a minute or two, do we? I'll just move it down a little bit. Yes, we do have a minute or two if you have questions. In the meantime, thank you very much, Richard. And um, <laughs> would you like to... you have a question. Have a oh, excellent. Oh, okay. Yes, uh, I was wondering if it worked fine with the current uh, filter translator, or you, you need the new one and then previous content you have already translated using the old way? Yes, so the, the, the plugin, well, plugin set is sort of self-contained, so yeah. you would need to use those. We are looking, correct me if I'm wrong, we're looking at the ability to um, you know, import existing translations from other sites. The other thing I would say is that for specific development mm -hmm. of technical questions, we do have two specific people in the room, Rajneel, hello Rajneel, and Andrew as well. If you want to catch them on specific um, sort of technical questions like that, hunt them down in the, in the coffee breaks and you grab them. But, um, but yeah, certainly importing existing translations is something that we are looking at uh, in, the, in, the, in the near future. Okay, thank you. Bye okay, then. thank you. Um, Anto Anthony, if you'd like to get your presentation up, I think we've got time for one more actually while you're doing that. Over there, yeah, we'll just get a microphone for you. I don't, Richard. Uh, does it work side by side with the existing multilingual filter? Uh, no, it does not, apparently. But Andrew can take this one. If you get the order of precedence. Um, so if you get the order of precedence of the filter right, it, it, will, it will work okay. But obviously, things might get a bit crazy.